Hello and welcome back. In the next few lectures, we are going to discuss what is called uh, the method of generating functions in combinatorics. This is a very powerful method and it is especially useful uh, when we are dealing with uh, the following kind of uh, situations. So, it, uh, you know, as we, as we have noticed, uh, we have uh, several uh, situations where you know, we have a parameter like it's a probably a natural number and uh, uh, associated to this natural number we have we have uh, you know a, a, a number uh, which comes as the uh, number of objects of certain uh, combinatorial structure for example uh, you know you can talk about the uh, number of permutations of an n element set right which we know is n factorial or you can talk about the number of graphs on an element uh, uh, vertex set or uh, you can talk about uh, binary uh, words uh, of uh, a spe specific length let's say uh, n right uh, binary strings of uh, length n uh, or uh, let's say uh, lattice paths uh, uh, you know uh, of uh, you know n steps or uh, uh, let's say triangulations uh, of uh, a polygon or we can talk about the number of uh, polygon with n sides and we can talk about uh, the the number of ways of bracketing uh, a product of n matrices right? so all these examples we have uh, a natural number uh, n and associated to this number we have uh, uh, we have the number of uh, objects of a particular type uh, so now uh, this particular uh, uh, you know uh, situation gives rise to uh, defining what uh, we can call sequences uh, or counting sequences now generating function uh, gives a nice way to encode uh, the entire sequence into uh, into a function form right it's a nice form uh, which can be uh, you know uh, immediately decoded or uh, you know like uh, uh, decoded to uh, get uh, a specific value uh, you know spe you know for a fixed parameter that we want right or, or a parameter that we want so let us first uh, look at what are counting sequences right so what is what is a sequence so a sequence is uh, nothing but a a function from the set of uh, natural numbers to uh, you know, let's say real numbers or or, uh, or uh, natural numbers itself uh, I mean it could be anything like that so uh, basically uh, a sequence is something which uh, you know we can put it into uh, you know order according to the natural numbers say for every natural number including 0 let's say 0 1 2 etc we can associate this uh, number and then uh, that defines uh, a sequence. For example, uh, here is a sequence, uh, you know, one, two, four, eight, etc. So how how this sequence came about is that like I am looking at the number of binary words of uh, length n. Okay. So let uh, let's say that W is the set of uh, uh, such binary all of binary words. Then I can arrange W right. Uh, as follows, like you know, uh, we put the number of uh, uh, strings with uh, you know zero uh, letters, which is the empty string. Then uh, we have zero and one, which are the one letter strings. Then you have zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, and zero, one, which are the two letter strings, right? Uh, this way we we put this uh, set, and then uh, we can talk about uh, W n, uh, which is the set of binary words of length n, right? So W n uh whatever uh, how many numbers are there uh, we know it is actually 2 raised to n right we have 2 raised to n strings uh, using 0 and 1 and therefore uh, we have the sequence wn which is sequence uh, 2 raised to n so basically it's a function from uh, the natural number 0 1 2 3 etc to uh, 0 going to 1 uh, right uh, 1 going to 2 2 going to 4 4 uh, 3 going to 8 etc right so basically n going to uh, 2 raised to n so uh, this is basically a counting sequence because it counts the number of uh, binary words of 
uh, that length. Right? So uh, that is one uh, nice example of a uh, counting sequence. Now uh, we can look at other examples. As we said, like we can look at the number of permutations. We know it's n factorial for an n element set. So therefore, I can talk about the sequence uh, p n, uh, which is basically zero factorial, one factorial, two factorial, uh, etc. Right, and uh, that is the counting sequence uh, for the uh, for the uh, permutations. Similarly, uh, we have uh, T n. The sequence T n counts the triangulations of a polygon with n sides, and we know that uh, uh, it is basically the Catalan number. Right, we we discussed this before, and therefore we have uh, uh, you know the sequence uh, T n to be sequence C n, where C n is one by n plus one uh, times two n uh, choose n. So uh, these are uh, examples of counting sequences. Now, once you have a counting sequence, our idea is to put it into a nice uh, function form, right? And then uh, try to use this function uh, uh, to do uh, several uh, manipulations. And uh, whenever we want, we can retrieve this information immediately. That is the idea. So <clears throat> to do this, what we are going to do is to define, uh, uh, you know, uh, what is called formal power series. So before going to formal power series, let us see what is a power series. So given any sequence, right, sequence of real numbers, let's say sequence a n uh, for n greater than or equal to zero, we can define, we can associate uh, a power series by multiplying uh, a n with x raised to n and summing over all n. Right. So. Uh, this uh, does uh, two things, right? One is that like you can now write it as a sum, and when you do this sum, uh, we can still recover uh, a n as the coefficient of x raised to n, right? Because when you have powers of x, right, which is a variable or indeterminate, we cannot add them together, right? So we can just write it as a sum. But uh, you know, uh, if if uh, you know if I have x and x square, I cannot add them, right? I, you know, x plus x square, I can write. But I cannot add it. So this uh, this helps to get back uh, a n right by just looking at what is the coefficient of x raised to n. Now in some cases, like in power series, we know that if the power series converges, uh, it uh, usually converges to a function. And if you have a nice function, then we can uh, use that function as a placeholder for the power series, right? And then whenever we want, uh, we can retrieve back. The coefficients by using the uh, Taylor series uh, expansion of the function and uh, evaluating at x equal to zero, right? And then you can you can find out this uh, uh, series and uh, its coefficients. So this is something uh, you know it's standard. You know uh, it can be done. Now, uh, so in the following example of a power series summation x raised to n, where uh, you have the constant sequence uh, one 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 etc. Right? So a n is one 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 etc. Right? Well, a n is one. Uh, so sequence a n is sequence one 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 etc. Then uh, maybe I should I should write. Uh, this way to know that this is a sequence, right? It's not a it's not a set. Okay. So uh, now. So if, if all the you know all, all the uh, constants are uh, one, then we have summation x raised to n, and uh, we know that this uh, series converges to one over one minus x whenever mod x is less than one, right? So how do you how do you do this? How do you prove this? And this is something that we have studied in calculus. So suppose I have uh, uh, summation x raised to n. So I have. So let us say that t is equal to 1 plus x plus x square plus etc. Then uh, uh, you know, I know that xt is equal to, right? x plus x square plus etc. Right? But this is, uh, uh, you know, the previous sequence minus 1, the first term is missing. So this is equal to.
right so from this uh, uh you know stay minus one right So, uh, you know, uh, T x is equal to T minus 1. So, from this, we can find out what is uh, what is T. So, T is equal to uh, 1 by uh, 1 minus x, right? So, this we can we can uh, find easily. So, uh, we, we, we solve for this and we get the, uh, uh, the function, nice function. And, uh, you know, if you, if you take the Taylor series expansion, uh, you can recover uh, the uh, series. Okay, now we are going to work with what is called formal power theory. So, you know, when we say formal, it is formal in the sense that, uh, you know, when, when we add uh, or like, you know, some do some operations with this uh, series, we have to keep in mind that we are not uh, really adding, we are only, uh, you know, writing it as a formal sum. And uh, uh, it also, uh, uh, you know, emphasizes the fact that, the series that we uh, look at may not always converge, okay? And we don't we don't really worry about the convergence because what we want is a way to put uh, all the uh, you know the uh, information about the sequence in a nice form, and uh, we are not going to uh, evaluate it at uh, you know uh, at a point uh, for x uh, just to you know. Uh, uh, so therefore, the convergence really doesn't matter, to us, right? So. And, and we know that when x equal to 0, uh, you know, uh, it's going to converge, but, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't converge in an interval. Still, we can use this uh, series. But when we work with uh, uh, power series, uh, and if it doesn't converge, uh, you know, people might object that, okay, uh, this is, uh, you know, not really right. We cannot add these two things because they are both diverging. But then, uh, we say that, okay, it doesn't matter because we are not really looking at you know uh, the sum right we are going to uh, we are only looking at the coefficients and whenever we are go going to look at we are only going to look at uh, finite coefficients and therefore uh, we are only worried about that and and it doesn't matter whether the entire series converges so so therefore we define what is called formal power series where we don't really worry about the convergence issues so the analytic properties uh, need not always hold, but whenever it holds, we can use it to get some nice forms. So we will we will uh, we will write it as formal power series most of the time. But uh, when we can really use uh, you know the uh, the analytic properties, sometimes we can we can use the convergence. Uh, but uh, that we don't discuss it in this course. Uh, only when we look at uh, uh, more uh, advanced topics, we might need to look at evaluation of uh, uh, the generative functions or power series uh, at some point. Okay, so uh, without formal ado, uh, further ado, uh, let us uh, see what is a formal power series. So, formal power series is an expression of the form summation a n x raised to n, where uh, sequence a n is a sequence of coefficients of uh, 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 elements from uh, typically a field. Okay, so we are going to look at uh, you know. Uh, uh, with the assumption that we are going to draw the coefficients uh, from a field and uh, uh, let's say field k and most of the time we will assume these coefficients uh, uh, you know uh, uh, that the field of coefficients contains uh, the set of uh, uh, the field of rational numbers right for example we look at q r or c right the uh, the rational field, the real field, or the complex field. But uh, it is not necessary that we can all, uh, we, we not always, uh, you know, we, we, it doesn't, it's not uh, important uh, that it is, uh, it is a field. We can also work with uh, the cases when uh, K is a ring also. Now, uh, we will not discuss, uh, you know, uh, these things. For the time being, we will just assume uh, this to be the case. So we have uh, the formal power series. Uh, which is defined over uh, uh, this field k and uh, uh, it basically takes the sequence an and then multiplies uh, uh, the term uh, ai with x raised to y and then sums over uh, all i right now 
let us look at some examples. So uh, here is the first example f of x, which is 1 plus 2x plus 4x square plus 8x cube plus etc. Right. So this is uh, basically uh, coming from the uh, let us say the sequence of binary uh, words. Right. The, the number of binary words of length n, and uh, that will tell you. Uh, that uh, you know the, the function is uh, 1 plus 2x plus 4x square plus etc because the n element uh, you know a, a, you know length n string has exactly 2 raised to uh, 2 raised to n uh, uh, possibilities okay similarly we have uh, another uh, sequence let us say uh, sequence n right where uh, you know 1 2 3 etc is the sequence so what is the uh, what is the uh, power series which is summation uh, n x raised to n then you have summation n factorial x raised to n which is another series which uh, is the series which represents the number of let's say permutations of uh, uh, n elements then uh, you know so these are all examples of uh, power series and the formal power series and in this particular case, when uh, you know we have the constant sequence one, right? We have summation x raised to n. That uh, sequence, for example, uh, can be written as one by one minus x, as we showed before, because it converges for uh, you know values of x uh, where mod x is less than one. So uh, and 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 in that interval, uh, because it converges to one by one minus x, we can always write it as one by one minus x. So if if the you know series converges for any uh, interval, right? Uh, any small interval, uh, how ma no matter how small, we can uh, write uh, it as that function. Right? So we can we can use this uh, to help uh, you know, putting the entire information in the series directly to this function, and that is what uh, we are going to use uh, in our calculations often. So we saw that f of x is equal to 1 plus 2x plus 4x square plus etc. Right. Now, since we know that 1 plus x plus x square plus etc. Right, which is the summation x raised to n is 1 by 1 minus x. Let us replace x by 2x. Right. So x is an indeterminate. So therefore, 2x is also an uh, indeterminate. So if I replace x with 2x, then I will get the uh, uh, you know, series 1 uh, plus 2x plus 4x square plus etc. But since this converges to 1 by 1 minus x, I can say that uh, this uh, say series 1 plus 2x plus 4x square etc. converges to 1 by 1 minus 2x. Right? So because uh, I just replace x with 2x, I get this. Now, of course, the convergence of this is in a smaller interval, right? So now uh, instead of uh, converging for mod x less than 1, it converges for uh, uh, two times mod x less than one. So this way uh, we can uh, we can use the you know so for any constant now we can say three raised to n uh, x raised to n can be right the, the sequence three raised to I mean you know three raised to n x raised to n or k raised to n x raised to n we can uh, we can put it into one by one minus k x uh, kind of form. Uh, a slight deviation from uh, our uh, formal power series. Uh, this is because we will need uh, this uh, uh, generalization of this binomial uh, coefficients uh, to uh, use sometimes in calculation. Right. So this will help. So we we already saw that uh, you know the uh, the binomial coefficient. Right. So given uh, uh, two uh, natural numbers, let's say n and k. Uh, where n is uh, greater than or equal to k, we have uh, uh, the binomial coefficient n choose k, right? Which we came across because it is uh, it is the number of ways to choose a k element set from an n element set. Now, uh, so we, we we found out that this uh, this n choose k is actually uh, n into n minus one into n minus two, etc. Uh, n minus k plus one, right? The the first k times divided by uh, k factorial right this, this is something that we, we proved earlier and then we said that okay we can also write it as we 
we can also write it as n factorial by k factorial into n minus k factorial and this was possible because uh, because uh, you know uh, n factorial is basically 1 2 3 etc up to n and uh, uh, what we were looking at is uh, uh, is n into n minus 1 etc n minus k plus 1 right so therefore if i take n factorial it has all these terms but then uh, to remove the uh, the last uh, uh, n minus k terms i have n minus k n minus k uh, minus 1 etc up to 1 and that goes to uh, uh, to n minus k factorial right so therefore i can i could have uh, done uh, is to replace uh, you know this by n factorial by n minus k factorial and therefore i i got this nice uh, expression on the other hand, uh, when we look at generalized binomial coefficient, we use the previous uh, case where we uh, the, the definition where what we have is uh, n factor uh, no, instead of n factorial we have n into n minus one etc. by k factorial so take this definition right and then let us define for a real number now right so a is a real number and k is a natural number so, so for this case we are going to define uh, a choose k as the generalized binomial coefficient so what is a choose k it is a into a minus 1 a minus 2 etc a minus k plus 1 divided by k factorial now one can ask like uh, why does this make sense right so uh, we will see this uh, you know when we see some applications uh, but uh, of course uh, you know uh, this is perfectly uh, you know well defined because we you know we have all these things even though we cannot define for example a factorial we can define uh, this easily So we have the generalized uh, binomial coefficient a choose k uh, in this way. Now, uh, as an example, let us look at this one one by two choose three. Right? So what is one by two choose three? It is one by two into minus uh, you know one by two minus one, which is minus one by two, into uh, one by two minus two, which is uh, minus uh, three over two, and uh, divided by three factorial, which is uh, basically. Uh, 6 into 8, 48, 3 by 48, which is 1, 1 over 16, right? So we have uh, we have this uh, we have this uh, expression uh, and the binomial coefficient for 1, 1, uh, 1 over 2, 2, 3. So uh, this could be uh, useful as we will see uh, later. We can also uh, now define uh, the generalized uh, uh, binomial theorem, right? So binomial expansion is one plus x whole raised to a, right? So instead of uh, you know one plus x whole raised to n, we have one plus x whole raised to a for a real number now, which I can write as summation a choose n x raised to n for any uh, real number a and uh, uh, n uh, being natural numbers, right? Uh, n greater than zero. Now, how do you prove this theorem? Well, uh, what you do is that we look at the uh, we look at the Taylor series expansion of the function one plus x whole raised to a. So what is the Taylor series expansion? We take the nth derivative, right? So one plus x whole raised to a take the nth derivative. What do we get? We will get uh, a into a minus one into etc. Right? We will get uh, if you take the nth derivative of 1 plus x whole raised to a, we will get a into a minus 1 into etc. a minus n plus 1 into 1 plus x whole raised to a minus n because we have taken the uh, derivative n times. Now we want to evaluate this at uh, uh, you know uh, x equal to 0, right? So then what we will get is uh, a into a minus 1 into a minus 2 etc. a minus uh, n plus 1. And what Taylor theorem says is that. This is precisely the coefficient of x raised to n by n factorial uh, when we write to uh, when we try to expand. Right? So because it is the coefficient of x raised to n by n factorial, 
what is the coefficient of x raised to n? That is going to be this divided by n factorial, right? Now, what is this? A, a minus 1, etc. A minus, uh, when I say this, it is only the same up to here. Because uh, when, when I substitute for x equal to 0, uh, this term becomes uh, 0, right? So this becomes one, right? So this for uh, so therefore uh, I I just have uh, this, which is uh, the definition of the binomial coefficient a choose n. So therefore, uh, since I know that the coefficient of x raised to n is going to be now uh, uh, a choose n, right? And I, therefore I have I have the theorem. So that is the proof. So uh, we once we have this, we can use this to, uh, for example, uh, expand uh, uh, a given uh, you know function. For example, one by one minus x, I can write as one minus x whole ratio minus one. Now minus one is a real number, right? And uh, I have uh, uh, one plus minus x whole raised to minus one. Therefore, I can use the uh, generalized binomial expansion which will tell me that it is summation minus 1 choose n minus x whole raised to n. Now what is minus 1 choose n? It is minus 1 into minus 2 into etc. Uh, minus n divided by uh, n factorial. But this is minus 1 whole raised to n divided by uh, uh, minus 1 whole raised to n into n factorial divided by n factorial. So n factorial cancels out, I will get minus 1 whole raised to n. So, uh, uh, now, this is the uh, minus 1 choose n time. So, then, then I have minus 1 whole ratio n and uh, minus x whole ratio n. So, these together uh, will give me x ratio, right? So, therefore, I get some x ratio. So, this is another way to uh, you know, uh, expand uh, uh, using the binomial uh, theorem, generalized form. Now we can define uh, the whole algebra of uh, formal power series, right? So we we have uh, we have uh, you know we can define addition, we can define scalar multiplication, we can define product, all these things, and then uh, one can show that it actually forms uh, a ring. Okay, so we can call it the, the formal power series ring. Now we will not go into the details of this because that is not part of our course. Uh, but we will we will just uh, state a few things and uh, we say how do the addition and multiplication work. Okay. So given given two uh, series, let's say uh, f of x is equal to summation f n x raised to n. Which is the first series, then you have uh, another series g of x, which is summation g n x raised to n. Now, given these two, I can define the sum of the series f of x and g of x, which is f plus g of x. So, f plus g is the sum. So, f plus g of x is basically summation fn plus gn x ratio. Now, this is clear because uh, now when we have two formal power series, right, uh, when we take the sum, uh, we can only add, for example, the coefficient of the like term, right, the corresponding terms, x ratio n. Uh, I have to take the coefficient and then add with the coefficient of acceleration. That is the only way we can add. Therefore, uh, it's a natural way to uh, define the uh, sum, right? Now, what uh, will be interesting is when we see how this can use these kind of uh, operations to define uh, what happens in the combinatorial structures. 